Good afternoon, folks. My name is Tim Wheaton with Kafka Sports, and today we're so lucky to have the Burmese Python joining us, Angla and Sang. Thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate your time. How's everything today, sir? Good. We woke up this morning, had some breakfast, got a workout in, so life is good. Life is already good. Got breakfast, got a workout in. Now, I, I was reading some other interviews with you, and you said last year in 2020, you'd have about two years left. At, at this point, that's about one year left. What do you see in your fight future? What do you want out of the rest of the out of the MMA career? I want everything. I want, I want all the smoke. I want, I want to put on some good fights. I want to be the best version of myself and, and just, you know, have a uh, put on some exciting fights, memorable fights for the fans that I can look back and say, wow, you know, I put on some good fights. So, so we asked our listeners what they suggested for some of your fights. And we got uh, the Riddler, we got Yushin Okami, we got moving to heavyweight and trying to fight Arjun Buller. We also got Jake Paul. We got Logan Paul for your final fight. Few fights. What do you plan? Who do you want to call out? Who, what, what do you think is best? Well, we have a few fights, you know, that could potentially happen. You know, it's, uh, first of all, the big dash three could happen. Uh, for, for me, it doesn't really matter. I just want good fights. Uh, like the, the Abbasov called me out, you know, Abbasov would be a good matchup as well for me. Mm -hmm. Um, of course, Renair, you know, and then Yoshi Okami, like everybody that called me out, it would be a good fight. No, absolutely. Yushin Okami is a fun one. Uh, you know, you've been through some wars in your career and a lot of memorable fights. What was your, looking back, what is your favorite fight to look back on? Uh, win winning the, the, the world title, you know, against Big Dash, that was the probably the most memorable and the most, probably the, the, the one that changed my life. Oh, absolutely. It's, it was a huge fight. And it, it's just an absolute scene winning it in Myanmar as well, right? Yeah, yeah. When I was the big, very big underdog, you know, like 10 to 1 underdog. So just being able to overcome the odds. Oh, just and, absolutely. And, yeah. It, it's one of those things that it's hard to explain even in words, you know. And when I think about it, you know, it's one of those things that if I do retire, I'm like, yeah, I'm glad I, I, I got, you know, I got to win that belt at least, you know, so. Oh, I've, you won a couple of belts as well. Right? Sorry, say that no, again. It's something, so it's, it's one of those things that I will never like. Uh, it's an accomplishment that I, I, you know, nobody can take away from me. So. No, and it's amazing. You won a couple of belts, won them by incredible fashion in your in Myanmar as well. Like it's it's absolutely amazing to see those videos and see how you're treated. Speaking of which, you have um a bronze statue of you in myanmar how humbling of an experience is it to have a statue dedicated to you it's very humbling you know it's very humbling uh being the first you know champion in in myanmar in any like international sports is big and you know it just shows me you know i am here i am today because of the people back home because of their support and you know it just uh it's, it's a humbling, it's a humbling moment. It doesn't get to my head. It just, it just makes me appreciate and, 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 and be thankful for all the hard work that I put in. Mm -hmm. you know, if I had a statue, it would definitely go to my head. I have no doubt about that. So you're a better man than me. <laughs> <laughs> no, Being from sure. Myanmar originally, how much does the home culture influence your martial arts philosophies and your fighting style? Uh, you, you know, I was, uh, I lived in Myanmar until I was 18 years old, and then I, I came here for college, and and then um, uh, and then the next 18 years is spent in the United States. But in Myanmar, the thing that we do is every kid knows how to punch, every kid knows how to kick. You know, I did karate. You know, I watch. You know, I watch uh, lightweight fights. Um, so martial arts is ingrained in us. Oh man, and lightweight is awesome as well. Uh so we were talking about martial arts. What was the main motivation of getting into martial arts when you were a younger man? I think it's in our blood, just wanting to fight, you know. My cousins, my brothers, like, we fight, you know, all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think it's just in us. And I've always, like, loved it. Um, I did karate when I was a kid. I mean, that, that's why I tell my friends all the time. I wish, you know, 
I wish I was born in the United States because I would have wrestled. I would have done jujitsu. I would have done all these stuff, you know. But growing up in Myanmar, it was a little bit harder. And 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 Lewe is kind of looked down upon, you know. Educated people don't do that way. They don't fight, you know. But it is in all of us. It, it's in it's in it's in the blood. You said something quite particular there with wrestling in the United States. It's so hard to catch up to people who are in wrestling in the United States. Like if you started MMA five years ago, you're still behind these guys like Derek Brunson, your training partner, who started when he was 13 years old, right? You're talking about wrestling, right? Wrestling in particular, yes. Yeah, you're talking about wrestling in particular. Uh, yeah, for sure. You, you can't. It's hard for, for you to catch up, but but if you put effort into it, if, if you put your mind and your soul into it, you can catch up. Absolutely. Because, because a 13-year-old kid, a 14-year-old kid is not going to have that much passion and it's not going to have that much uh, desire as a, a 30-some-year-old man. That's absolutely as a, as a true. Man, a kid is not going to have that much passion and 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 heart and and soul and mind like into it as a a grown man and and a grown man with a family how much does your family having children now of your own how much does that push you through fight camps and through fights themselves a a lot you know you're you're not providing for yourself anymore you're you're not you're not just doing it for yourself anymore You're, you're providing for a little baby you know for for your son um, and for your family, you know, so it, it's, 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 it makes it, it, it takes it, it takes your dedication and your sacrifice to the next level. No, oh, absolutely. I'm telling you, man, uh, towards the last, like part of the last fight camp, mm-hmm. like my pain tolerance is so high. Like my pain tolerance like was so high. And then when, when I came back after the fight, like I was in pain all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I can't believe that hurt. Well, it was a great last fight that you had as well. It was an awesome fight to watch, right? Yeah, yeah uh, it was a it was a fight that I needed, you know, to make a big statement, you know, after the two losses. Uh, and and you know, my my opponent went to the distance with with, with Renee, and some people actually thought he won the fight. So, like, I had to make a statement, you know, that 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 it's 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 I'm not done yet. You know, I'm here to stay. So. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, now, looking into your past, you've had some uh, really fascinating careers that a lot of people who come on the show that haven't had. So you have an agriculture agriculture degree. You are a beekeeper. You wanted to revolutionize farming in Myanmar. Can you tell us a little bit more about that and some of those ideas that you had at that time? Yeah, like like uh, Myanmar is technologically behind. You know, uh, like like when. Uh, when when Henry Hoof came to Myanmar, he said, "Hey, this this looked like Thailand when he first came to Thailand, which was like thirty or forty years ago, you know, like thirty years ago." So uh, what he means is like it's like you, we're stuck in like two decades ago, you know, two three decades ago, um, and that was in two thousand sixteen. Myanmar was opening up, you know. So imagine when I first came, when I when I left the country in two thousand three, it was a lot like less developed and in my heart like I wanted to I, I wanted to 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 get in the field of agriculture no pun intended there yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then and then and then you know change the agriculture uh, approaches in Myanmar um, do something productive you know do something good for the for the, for the people there for the country there um, but but then I fell in love with mixed martial arts you know so I have like a, so as you know, with a four-year degree, you don't really you don't really get anything. You, you don't become a master at you know, agriculture with a four-year degree. Like I was off by probably ten to twenty years. It takes about ten to twenty years to to to, to master something and to get really good at it, unless you're like unless you're hyper, hyper dedicated, super focused, laser focused on it. You know, then then it's something else. Um, but but. Especially, you know, in, in American colleges, college students are just drinking and just trying to get by, you know, past uh, partying. And, you know, so, so the, the, the whole uh, 
the whole uh, I guess college lifestyle is not it's not really it doesn't really make you very dedicated to your craft during that time for me it was agriculture but then while I was in college I started loving mixed martial arts so. no that's very reasonable what was the main driver of switching from agriculture and becoming a mixed martial artist was there some inspirations that you had in the sport or what was the main motivator behind that well I guess like I started falling out of love for agriculture when I realized like uh, it's it's a lonely life, man. And you have to be like, if you're working in a dairy farm, right? Think about this. You work at a dairy farm, your whole life is towards the cows. Like you don't have birthday off because the cows don't care about your birthday. You don't have Christmas off, you know? So, so it's it's a lonely world. You have to be all in. You know, you have to be. Your whole life revolves around the farm, and and for me, that's like I don't want my world to be like that. You know, I want my world to be a little bit bigger than that. You know, and then and then and then during that time, I just love mixed martial arts because you can do so much. You can punch. You can kick. You can wrestle. You can submit. You can do a lot. Like you know. Uh, that was what intrigued me. You can use your body to break somebody's arm. Like when I first started doing jujitsu, I was like, man, that's pretty crazy. That's pretty wild. Like, of course, it was the early 2000s. Like, you know, in, in the early 2000s, like mixed martial arts just getting popular. And I was very intrigued with that. You know, you can use your body part to break somebody's arm, break somebody's leg, choke somebody unconscious, knock somebody out unconscious. That, those are the things that intrigued me. And, and, and the fact that, you know, there's so much to learn made me like fall in love with mixed martial arts. Absolutely. It's, it's certainly a great sport to fall in love with martial arts as a whole. Uh, and now looking back, you, you've come from uh, Myanmar, went through farming and agriculture into mixed martial arts. And now you're giving back to Myanmar. You're working with the uh, Street School Initiative and Global Citizen. Are you able to tell us a little bit more about your efforts within the country? Yeah, right now, because of what's going on in Myanmar, it's uh, I, like I haven't had much. Um, I can't really work with them right now. Um, if you guys understand there's a, there's a political coup, um, the, the military's in power, even though the National League of Democracy and LD was elected. So Myanmar is right now at war. So. Um, Pray for Myanmar if you're a believer, if you're not, you know, just uh, just to shed some light, you know, uh, there's a lot of people persecuted and there's a lot of people um, getting getting killed and, and stuff like that. So it, it's not a good place right now. You know, Myanmar is not in a good place right now. And and hopefully, you know, uh, we, we can get over the hard times and, and look to a brighter future when this all ends to a brighter future for Myanmar. Yeah, it's really tough to talk about because Myanmar has not got a lot of mainstream media coverage. So I wrote an article on Faux Thought earlier this year, the one championship fighter from Myanmar who uh, recently went missing. After your last fight, you said, pray for Myanmar. You have a microphone and you're one of the bigger stars of Myanmar. Um, how can a normal person stay aware or help out? Or what do you want to tell the world on behalf of Myanmar? Uh, you know, it's, if you, you live in the United States, uh, the UK right now, the UK, UK, United States, Australia, uh, appreciate what you have, appreciate the freedom that you have and, and just be a good citizen of, of the world, you know, just be a good, good you know, citizen of the world. Uh, don't spread so much hate spread more love and, you know, uh, and care for care for other people. Uh, I know a lot of people, you know, like to talk talk bad things online, you know, on, on social media and stuff. But just understand, you know, there's always somebody on the uh, on the other side that's seeing that, and and don't reciprocate hate because there is a lot of hate in other places, you know. Uh, like in Myanmar, you can't you can't you you can't. Like there's a lot of things that you can't do. And, and I don't know if you know what the situation in Kodo right now. I haven't heard right? anything. I haven't heard anything in a few months about this, no. Yeah, apparently he, uh, 
um, uh, a bomb exploded in his gym and he's uh, he's pretty badly like he's pretty badly hurt his body is like um like i don't know if it's uh 60 or something like that uh, his skin is like burnt um uh, some organ like got hit pretty bad and he, he's in a very bad position and his uh him and his uh, two siblings are also in jail um and that's all because of he, he, him speaking out online and stuff like that and as Americans, as a people, you know, people in UK, Australia, don't take those rights for granted, you know, the, the rights that you have. And, and, and because you have those rights, be a good human being, you know. Um, and, and just spread love, not hate, you know. It's, it's kind of easy for, like, it's, it's easy for, like, uh, like Americans to, to, uh, to, to, to be, like, uh, to take it for granted that the rights that they have, you know, and to complain about a lot of things, like a lot of little things, you know, that that when 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 people that have like when, when the things that you have are on everyday basis is a luxury for people, in, you know, somewhere else. There are billions of people that would trade places with you. So just be grateful for that. Oh, absolutely. And his story specifically was heartbreaking because. There's his story is probably copied over uh, many times over, but because he's a little bit more known in the country as a fighter and his brother was a, a football player, he's a little bit more known. But he was arrested in the hospital while he was still recovering from the bomb blast as well. It's a really sad story to read about of what's happening. Yeah, and and he was forced to make a statement. You know, so it's kind of sad. Man, it, it's really tough. But I also want to ask you on uh, your religion and spirituality and relationship to God. We've had a lot of fighters come on the show and talk about their relationship to God. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about your relationship? Is that something that I can ask about? Yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm a Christian. I was born a Christian. And I'm a Christian, you know. Um, like, I believe, I believe I was put here for a reason by God, you know. And, and, uh, and, and, uh, and, and because like, I believe that, you know, I was saved by God that I should spread his word, his love. Um, and and it, it also like my, my last fight, like it was hard, you know, it was hard. Leading up to the fight was hard. And, and, and I know that I got the strength from him, from God, you know, to, to be able to continue through the hard times. Mm -hmm. so, Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah. for young folks who are maybe entering the sport of mixed martial arts, is there any advice that you now have lots of experience in mixed martial arts, many years and many fights and many great wars? What advice would you be giving to younger folks who are starting into mixed martial arts? It's a long journey, you know, do it because uh, you love it, you know, find, find, find your why. Why do you want to, why do you want to fight? If your fight is for superficial reason, then you're going to have a long road unless you're super talented, you know, unless you're like super talented. Um, if you work hard, you can beat guys that are super talented as well. You can, you can, uh, uh, but you do have to work hard. It takes a lot of years of sacrifice. Um, just understand this, all right? Uh, it takes years to get into the big shows. And even in the big shows, the initial pay isn't that much. Even in the big shows, like very few people get into the big shows. Even in the big shows, the initial contract isn't that much. So understand that, and 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 it, it's a it's a marathon, man. You have to devote your life to this to this to this sport to this endeavor, you know. Now, speaking of fighter pay, you're able to have sponsors. You are or a double champion in one. Did you ever? Do you know anything about how much you would have got offered in the UFC? even with your resume have, have they ever sent you an offer or anything like that uh i think it would have been pretty close but but one championship has other stuff that you know on the base pay i think it would be pretty close but one championship has other stuff that are above other organizations mm -hmm. you know? Gotcha. Makes it a lot, makes it worth staying with one championship. Yeah. Uh, so I asked this question to all the guests who come on this show. Some fighters have their own signature brands, such as signature uh, tequila, signature whiskey, signature hot sauces, stuff like that. If you had your own Angla signature brand, what would your signature brand be? Uh, 
I think I'm not going to do signature brand. I'm just going to do like a, I'm just going to go into something else like real estate. Something, something much more uh, reasonable, something much more safe. So this was the perception that I was thinking that you were uh, like the double champion fighting from Myanmar to the United States to Singapore. And then when I was listening to interviews with you, I thought this guy is so reasonable and just like, so this like into real estate, into family, into God, he's just a great guy. He's a great symbol for the sport. So I, I, I really do appreciate your time today. And thanks so much for coming on the show. Thank you. Thank you. That means a lot. Thank you very much. No, I really appreciate that. Keep working hard. Yeah. Much appreciated. Uh, so what's the rest of the week look like in Singapore? we got a fight event this Friday. What? How long are you there for? Martin fights uh, Friday night, and then we're there for two more days, and then we, we head home. Everything is in and out within 10 days. Wow. Yeah, we have that special yeah, permit, yeah. So oh. Singapore technically is a real fight island. That's it is an actual island. It is actual fight island in and out in 10 days. No, absolutely awesome stuff. Uh, one more question for you, sir. Who is the toughest training partner at Sanford MMA? There are no easy rounds. There are no easy rounds. You know, my, my, my uh, last week was uh, Phil Haas, Brendan Allen, Gregory Rodriguez. Um, just really good, good middleweights there. Um, you know, Tuco, uh, and then we have the heavier weight like Linton Vassell, uh, Steve Maury is somebody you should watch for, you know. Andre Fialo helped me out a lot in my last fight. Um, Rory McDonald, you know, we have, we have a, a great group of guys. Of course, we also, you know, Derek Brunson. It's just, just, just great group of guys. Ian Heinich, uh, and then Nate Marquardt, you know, Nate Marquardt helps me out a lot. Yeah. Yep. King of Pan, crazy Nate, Nate Marquardt. Yeah, Nate Marquardt's coming back. Yeah, he just fought recently, won his last fight recently, and he's going to be fighting in six weeks. And hopefully I'm there with him in his corner. So it's going to be exciting. Absolutely awesome stuff. I really appreciate your time here today, Angla. Uh, my yes. name is Tim Wheaton with Tim Wheaton MMA and Calf Kick Sports. Angla, I'm going to give you the last word here. To tell the folks where can we find more of you? Uh, where can yeah. we follow more? Tell us everything. Instagram, you know, Twitter. I'm on Facebook and also, um, yeah, I'm not on TikTok. <laughs> so, um, but but you know who you should interview? You should interview Nate Mugwart. Yeah. Let's set it up here. Let me, uh, yeah, thanks so, so much for listening, folks. But here, let me go off air and then we can set it up. Thanks for your time, folks.